Oftentimes, we are tasked with approximating the area under a curve of a function. And one of the easiest ways of making this estimate is to use something called a Riemann sum. Riemann sum. And the easiest way to imagine the, you know, the concept of a Riemann sum, I think, is to imagine a loaf of bread. So imagine we have a nice, green, delicious loaf of bread. I should probably write bread so you know what this is. OK, so imagine this is actually a loaf of bread. And we're trying to find the area of the loaf of bread. You know, it's quite simple. You know, in high school or middle school, you learn that the, the area equals the height times the width. Height times the width. And so you might be wondering, Scott, why are you telling me this? Of course, the area of, of a loaf of bread is the height times the width. But if I cut this loaf of bread into a few slices, if I went slice, 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 and I cut it into five slices, two, three, four, five, and each slice was separated by the same x value. You know, you can imagine this is this is the the y value on a on a graph, and this is the x value. Then each slice is separated by a width of delta x, and the height remains the same. So we could also think of the area. You know, the area hasn't changed, but we could also say that the area equals the sum of the area of each slice. So let's say the area of the whole loaf of bread was 10. And we have five slices. So therefore, each slice must have an area of 2. So we go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So if we knew the height times delta x, you know, let's say the height, let's say the height was 2 and delta x equals 1. You know, right? Then we're taking 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. And so we can notate this in Riemann notation. And that's just saying that the sum equals the summation of capital sigma. The, we're starting at slice equals 1. And we're going to the total number of slices. Total slice slices, which equals 5. And so we're just taking the area of each one. So we're taking the height times the width. And what this is saying is that, hey, we, if we take slice 1, and we take the height times the width of slice 1, so we're taking height times delta x, and we add that to slice 2. So we're going up by 1. We're going to do that. We're going to go up by 1 each time until we get to the total number of slices. We add that all together, and that will give us the area of the loaf of bread. And this is analogous to a function where, well, let's imagine we have a function. By adding up the number of slices, we can get an approximate value of the area. So in this case, we're trying to find the area under the curve here. We're trying to find this area here. If we draw multiple slices, so we just draw a slice here, slice here, and we just keep drawing these, these rectangles. And we use rectangles because the area is so easy to calculate. You know, we, could, we can easily calculate this by hand. But if we add them all up, it's pretty close to the actual area under the curve. Now, as you can see, we're missing these, these black spots here. Those are areas which we haven't accounted for. And that's why it's an estimate rather than an exact value. So in this case, it would be a underestimate. But we might be also able to draw the rectangles another way. Just erase this. So if we were trying to find the approximate value. Oops under the curve, we could draw the rectangles like this. We could say, well, instead, I'm going to go left. And instead of drawing underneath the curve, we've drawn over the curve a bit. So 
as you can see here, we can add up all of these and it's just an equally valid estimate. Except you could say, well, look, we have all of this area here which we didn't actually need. And that would be a overestimate. And so an overestimate is called a right sum. A underestimate is called a left sum. And we can also do it one other way, and that is a middle sum. So let's say we have this graph redrawn. A middle sum is where we draw the rectangles directly in the middle. We say, we're not going to have it off to the left or off to the right. We're going to have it both. Draw it. So it's slightly under and slightly over at the same time. Because we know that if we took a underestimate, or if we took an overestimate, the actual value is somewhere in between. So we could use a middle sum to get a closer approximation. So this is a middle sum. Now the middle sum is a closer approximation, but it's still an approximation. This is not an exact value, but it makes for a quick estimate. So we'll see how well this bread analogy translates into a actual function. Calculating the area under a real function using a Riemann sum is still pretty straightforward. There's just a couple things to keep in mind. So we need a function, y equals, say, x squared, which will look something like this. And because we're calculating a definite area, we also need a definite interval. And we will make the interval, of course, you go from A to B. And in this case, we'll have the interval equal 0 to 2. So A equals 0, B equals 2. So this means we're going from A to B, or 0 to 2. Now, we of course have one in the middle there, so we can write this as you know, one in the middle. Now the subintervals is everything in between. So the subintervals is something we also need to know. It's subintervals. The more subintervals we have, the more rectangles we draw. So this equals the number of rectangles. And the subintervals would be if we wanted to add if we wanted four subintervals, we would have 0, 1. We could also say this is 0 0.5, and this is 1.5. So we have 0, 1.5, 1, 1.5, 2. We're going to plot a data point for each one of those subintervals. So we have a total of four subintervals. And subintervals is represented as n. So we have n equals 4, and we have 2 for our interval, because if you take 2, the upper bound, b, subtracted by the lower bound, a, we get 2. Now, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a left sum and a right sum. Left sum, right sum. Right sum. Now, the Riemann sum notation is that we take the sum as equal to the summation of i equals, now this is where we make the distinction between the left sum and the right sum. So I'll write, I'll write this twice because we have one for each sum. So sum equals the summation of i equals. Now with a left sum, we are essentially shifted to the left one point. So you can remember this as, we, we shift left with the left sum. And so like this is the left sum, and this is the right sum. So with the left sum, we don't start at i equals 1. We start at i equals 0 for n minus 1 times. So you just have to remember that we normally start like with the right sum at i equals 1 for n times. But with the left sum, you shift one unit to the left. 
And then the formula is fairly straightforward. It's just f of a plus i times delta x multiplied by delta x. And the same for this. We just take f of a plus i times delta x. And you multiply that by delta x. So this returns like f of something returns a y value. So this was the height. So we're just taking the height times delta x, which is going to be our width. So the distance between each point here is delta x. So all we have to do is take a f value of something and multiply that by a width, and then we get an area. And then we just have to sum up all of the areas. So here, with the left sum, if we start at i equals 0, and we have subintervals that equals n equals 4, then we're going to go 0, we're going to go 0, 1, 2, and 3. Whereas with the right sum, we're going to go 0, or sorry, we're not going to go 0. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. And so this just means we have four rectangles. We plug in the value of i into the formula. And this, well, I'll show you what I mean. OK, so each space in between the intervals. So what I mean by that is that in between here, you know, in between the a and the, or the 0 and the 0 0.5, we're going to draw a rectangle. And we're going to draw a rectangle in between each one of these. So let's imagine we're going to do a left sum. So we're going to do a left sum, and I'll plot this in the graph here. Then the left sum, what we do is we take the first one. So we're going to take i equals 0, which means that we're going to take f of a plus i times delta x. So this just means that we're starting at a. So we're starting at the left bound plus i times delta x. Now i equals 0, so we're just going to have f of 0. Because a equals 0 and i times delta x equals 0, then we're just, what is f of 0? It's 0. So our value of this times by the width, you know, we're just going to have f of 0 times you know, our, our delta x is 0 to 0 0.5. So our delta x is 0 0.5. Then f of 0 times 0 0.5 is just 0. So we have 0 area for that rectangle. Then i equals 1. So we take f of a. So we take f of 0 plus our i equals 1. So we go 1 multiplied by 0 0.5. Oops. So we're taking f of 0.5. And look, we're at 0.5. So we take, what is f of 0.5? Well, we just draw a vertical line. It intersects with the y-axis. And then we're multiplying that by delta x, as we can see here. So then we're just going to multiply it, and we'll have a rectangle of area 0 0.5 by 0 0.5. So we just draw a rectangle here. Now, the next one, i equals 2. We're going to take f of a. Well, a equals 0 still. So then we just take 0 plus 2 times 0 0.5. Because i equals 2, so we're taking 2 times 0 0.5, which equals 1. And then we're multiplying that by delta x, just like here. So we're taking f of 1 times delta x. So we go f of 1. Well, what's 1 squared? It's just 1. So we go 1 times delta x. And so we get that. We just take an area of 1. Now, the next thing is we take i equals 3, which just means we take f of 3 times 0 0.5 times delta x. So our area is 1 by 0.5. So this means we have 0.5 meters or 0.5 units squared. And now we have f of 3 times 1.5. So we have f of 1.5 times delta x, which equals 0.5. So what's f of 1.5? We just draw a rectangle up. And then 
our rectangle of a certain area, and this would be our left sum. So a left sum, as you can see, as we remember, is that it's a underestimate. So now, I'll draw over top in a different color the right sum. So the right sum, we go i equals 1. So i equals 1, that means we start at a plus i times delta x. So we essentially start at, well, what's the value here? We actually don't have 0, so that means we have what is i times delta x? It's 1 times 0.5, so what's f of 0.5? And that's why we go slightly vertical and we go over. Now the next one. So this is f of 0 0.5 multiplied by delta x. And then i equals 2 is just going to be f of 2 times delta x. So it's going to be f of 1 times delta x. And so without having to go through the whole thing, you can see that if we go f of 1 here, then we're going f of 1.5 here, and then we're going f of 2, that essentially we're just taking, that we're shifting it over. So we're saying that this is going to be an overestimate. So the bottom line is, for the left and right sum, we're just taking f of a plus i times delta x times delta x, which returns our height, and this returns our width, and this gives us an area of a rectangle. Then we're saying we want the sum of all rectangles from i equals 1 to i equals n, and here we're saying we want the sum of the area of all the rectangles from i equals 0 to i equals n minus 1. So all we have to do is draw up all the rectangles. And so in the next video, I'll go over how to calculate the area of a curve with integrals, which gives us an exact value rather than an estimate or approximation.